perfect time to segue and say hello to the mayor of Jacksonville as he uh, rolls in. Uh, kind of got that Jag vibe going. I don't know whether you've given the entire city the rest of the day off, Mayor, but welcome <laughs> in. How are you? I'm well. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we appreciate it. Uh, the vibe. I know you see a lot of people. You go around the city. We feel it. We're talking to, to Jaguar fans and maybe even Jaguar newcomer fans. What are you, what are you hearing? It's everywhere you go. Um, I was just in Publix getting lunch, and it's everybody's in a Jag attire. Everybody's saying hello and smiling. Yeah. Everybody's happy. You know, 2017 was the last time season, right? We had a playoff game here in 2018. I remember the vibe then, and it felt pretty special. But it had been so long since we'd experienced that here. Yeah. This one feels different. Maybe it's because we played for the division championship last week at home in prime time. This just all feels so much bigger and so much more excited. And 2017 was special. You think about what you've got in the city right now, a return to a bit of glory. Uh, the hard work that Doug Peterson and this group has put in, you've, you've witnessed a lot of that. You know, you're a Jag fan is, is, you know, as much as anybody out there. What is the difference in your mind? Well, I think the coach is the difference. You know, I look, I listen to you guys almost every day. Um, I listen to many people, many of the, the, the people on the show throughout the day and, the season looked lost, and I'm paraphrasing, I don't remember, but it stuck with me when he said it. Doug Peterson was asked, what are you saying to your players? I think they were 3-7 and seven at the time. Mm -hmm. And he said, I, all of our goals that we set the season are still within reach. He didn't say we're going to go the distance. We're getting, he just said they're in reach. Well, you know what the goals were, yeah. right? And here we are. It's the coach. So you asked everybody to wear teal last week. Yes. Anything special this week? Yeah, so the Jags are in teal and white, right? right. So I think uh, to the extent that you can, I unfortunately don't have any shirts that are teal other than like Jag shirts for the games, but teal and white, man. Yeah. And if you don't have it, put on the black. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It teal all works. Yeah. <laughs> but put it on, right? And even if you can't go to the game, you ought to come down. And even though the traffic's going to be bad, if you're not going to the game, just come down and experience the atmosphere. People are going to be, uh, I'm going down to 530. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's probably late compared to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because right? they're they're busting locks last week trying right. to get into these. Right. Uh, I was going to say locks. one courtesy of our nooners, our listeners, Mayor uh, Mayor Curry. They're wondering why are the lots opening at three? They want them to or at four forty five. I guess they want them to open earlier. If you could just kind of explain not only why that is, but also how the city is preparing for for a second straight Saturday. So many people coming to downtown. I have to get back to you on why I don't have that answer. Okay. If mm -hmm. I tried to BS my way through it, <laughs> y'all would call me on it. <laughs> Um, look, it's just, it's traffic prep, you know, and, uh, security and safety. I mean, you saw, we had emergency legislation this week for additional monies for this game. That's all the stuff that the city's responsible for surrounding the game, but, uh, it's going to be a great experience. The feedback I got from last week was, I mean, yeah, there was traffic, but mm -hmm. it, it, it was pretty smooth given that there were 70,000 people there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'd say get there early, as early as you can. Yeah. Well, you know, you're not going to be sitting around or standing around bored. No, no. People are going to be screaming Duval and having adult beverages. If you're not having an adult beverage, you can have a sparkling water or whatever it is you do. Right, right. Adult Smoke beverage. a cigar. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Eat some wings. Have a Cersei cigar. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> mayor's a big fan of the Cersei cigar. Yeah. That's right. So, you know, the mayor, a lot of the fans were here in 96, uh, in 1996 when I came to Jacksonville. And to see... The, the the atmosphere of the fans cheering you on. And this team reminds me a lot of the 96 team because of the way we started. We started the season three and seven. Yep. And we made a run. And we went into the AFC Championship game. It reminds me so much of their, their perseverance, the head coach, along with Tom Coughlin, keeping them motivated right there. How impressed have you been with this young team to stay afloat? Because it's hard to keep you know young players interactive when they're losing. How impressed has this young team been to you that they've stayed the course and have made this runner in the playoffs? I mean, it's unbelievably impressive. I don't know that, uh, you know, it, I don't know that really many people outside of that locker room believe this was possible. I mean, mm -hmm. if you were a fan that said, well, we can still get there at three and seven, you kind of knew in the back of your head you were wishing for something that statistically probably wasn't going to happen. And Vegas was telling you no way. And Vegas is usually right. Right? Yeah. Most so, often. Mm -hmm. So th this coach in this locker room. I, they they believed and they closed off all the noise and it's freaking so special right now. I mean, it's just is. so much fun. It is. It is. <laughs> it's just so much fun. 
I cannot wait till tomorrow night. Yeah. And you know what? I mean, it would be nice to have a comfortable lead and um, and blow them out. I actually hope we do. But if it comes down to the fourth quarter, that's what football is all about, right? Just like it did last yeah. week. Right? It's about competition and yeah. figuring it out in the fourth quarter. Well, we, we're going to come up with a theme today uh, because it's two big hair guys because we've got our big hair Friday and, you know, the flowing locks of Justin Herbert and Trevor <laughs> Lawrence. Uh, these two guys, I think it's only the third time since 1950 that two guys under the age of 25 have met for the first time in the postseason. And so it gives you an idea of just how big this can be. And Trevor can be the guy when we're, when we're like rolling out of there on Saturday night, instead of everyone talking about Justin Herbert, they're going to be talking about Trevor Lawrence if it goes right. And I think that's what's going to happen. Here's what we know now, right? We haven't had this in a long time. If we're down by 10 in the fourth quarter, everybody's confident. Mm -hmm. Every fan that's paid attention to this football team is confident we're still in it. Right? Mm -hmm. True. Yeah, They've seen it. And we <laughs> haven't experienced that in a really long time. So, so And, and I, the other thing I'll say, you mentioned the 96 team. Yeah. I mean, I've been one to say it recently. Gosh, I haven't seen the crowds like this and fans like that. I don't remember ever experiencing this. Well, the 90s were a long time ago. And I can actually go back and remember when I was young and at those games. It was – everybody was at those games. It was loud. It was exciting. It was fun. That's why this feels different. This feels like over 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Same I energy. think in 17 we were pinching ourselves. I don't think we're, even though we weren't supposed to, I don't think we're pinching ourselves right now. We feel like we belong here. Yeah. So speaking of those crowds, Mayor Curry, um, economic impact. What have you seen from last night's Saturday game? What do you guys anticipate seeing this Saturday? And maybe what does that say about what can become in the future? Yeah, so I don't have the direct, the, the numbers off the top of my head about last week's impact, but just to give context. So the Florida-Georgia, Georgia-Florida game is over $30 million in economic impact mm -hmm. every year. Now, mind you, there's people here for a few more days, but, I mean, this has got to be in excess of $20 million. And so your hotels, a couple things. You get bed tax, which bed tax helps us fund things like the stadium and other things, but you're also people that own restaurants, people that own hotels, people that own any of the facilities in and around the space. I mean, it lifts everybody up, and it's huge, and it's national spotlight. I mean, we have been on ESPN and the NFL Network non-stop now for almost two weeks. Yeah. I, I love it. I just flip back and forth just to see Jags, Jags, Jags. Yeah. Uh, and that's advertising our city. And then to be the only football game played on a Saturday night, kickoff's 8.15, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kickoff at 8.15, I mean, we get three-plus hours of a captive audience. Uh, it's about football, but it also it's, it, it, it shows the beauty of our city, our people, our fans, and it's good. Yeah, the, so it's great yeah, on media. Man. So, Lenny, we've talked about this many times, um, and I just saw something a few days ago how Cleveland's getting ready to put more money into their stadium. So in the time that Cleveland has built a stadium and now we'll put another billion into it, we still have this one here. We should have built one last Monday. <laughs> <laughs> go, but, go but, but the point being, <laughs> does, does winning, we always talk about this winning cures all ills. Does winning really cure all I guess the best way to put this is obstacles toward getting either a refurbished stadium or a new stadium. It, I mean, I, I'm a believer in winning solves all problems. Now, there's people that don't like to hear that, but it does. Um, it doesn't remove the obstacles, but it makes it easier. Look, when you are talking about a, a government partnership on a stadium, there's going to be a large segment of the population that are happy about that no matter what. That's okay. That's their opinion. That's a democracy. But even those people, when we're winning – they, it, they just they, the vibes better, right? You, so it it's always a heavy lift. It's a lift we'll get done. We this has to be. We we need a uh, we'll pro, the stadium will probably be redone. The bones are great, and it's going to be a huge investment. Um, and you know our plan is we're working with the team now to get as close to a deal as we can. I don't know how far we'll get, but if we don't finish it for the next administration to be well positioned to just get this done. And if you're winning, there's less noise. That's the yeah. best way to say it. There's, right. le there's less noise. But right. the plan remains, and I know Mark Lamping, president of the Jaguars, did an interview with Front Row Sports last week. The plan remains to renovate the existing building. That's right. There are no plans to go elsewhere for a different plot of land in town. In unless there's something I haven't seen, that's exactly right. And, and they will be able to play during the construction. Is that right? Uh, there is... 
I don't have an answer to that. Obviously, the best case scenario is that that ball games, while that's being done, are played in Jacksonville. That would that would that would be the goal. But too that's too far down the road, right? To say for sure what will happen, right? But so, I can tell you, everybody understands that's the best case scenario. So but, timeline for our for our listeners, uh, Mayor Curry. Shipyards, obviously we know the Performance Center. We've all seen it. It looks awesome. It's well on its way to being ready for this upcoming preseason in the summer. Um, But in terms of which project is next, the stadium versus the revitalization project around the stadium, which do you anticipate coming first? Uh, They're they're running simultaneously. The stadium renovation is much bigger. Um, But I I think you got to have – I can't say you have to. Best case scenario, you have a stadium deal done by – the end of this year, and if not the end of this year, beginning of next. Right, and, and, and I say and I don't know if I just made news. Hopefully, yeah, you guys yeah, have heard that yeah. somewhere because, else. Because I, I like I know the mayor says I can't say that, but we don't mind uh, that. It's okay. We'll, we'll just be the you know the radio mayor of Ten Ten XL. That stadium has to come first and has to come faster for everything else to happen. It's, that's right. Yeah. I mean, there's that that stadium is being an NFL team. It has to be done. Yeah. I mean, you just look at. How many stadiums are left that haven't been renovated mm-hmm. besides ours? Is it one or two? Right. And based on what Matt just said, you know, Cleveland's going Cleveland's back. Cleveland's not again. the only one. There's right. three, two or three others well. that are, yeah. right. that are not only have built a new stadium, they're refurbishing the new stadium. <laughs> that's right. In the time that Jackson has done nothing. And, and I think the key, it's important for your listeners to hear. So we, the, the, the budgets that we've had in this city the last seven years have invested – over a billion dollars in infrastructure all over the city. Neighborhoods, sidewalks, roads, stuff we didn't do for years. Mm-hmm. It's not a zero-sum game. So if seven or eight years ago, ten years ago, why are we doing a stadium? I need this and that in my neighborhood. We can demonstrate to the public that we've done it and we're going to continue to do That's it. Valuable. Our budgets are sound. We have money. We're investing in neighborhoods and parks everywhere. The Jags are investing in in youth programs and parks and neighborhoods outside of their sphere of uh you know, in beat football, mm-hmm. um, it's not a zero-sum game. Everybody can win. Yeah, that's valuable. All right, so look at this, Doc. I posted this little – Doc, uh, Mayor. <laughs> We're used to I, having doctors, yeah. not mayors yeah. on this program. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I posted this with a little throwback Thursday, yes. and this was you uh, with the great Kay Adams on Good Morning Football yes. the last time uh, this team was in this playoff so mode. And teal beer and everything. I'll tell you a funny story how the genesis of that. I think Good Morning Football debuted in 2016. Correct. Mm-hmm. And I used to come in, I used to work out early in the morning back then, um, really early. And I'd get in, and that program was new. It would be on. And I, I would tweet at them. Mm-hmm. And uh, they told, ended up telling me when I met them that somebody was like, hey, the mayor of Jacksonville tweets at us. This must be a parody account. There's no way he's watching our show every morning. <laughs> so they made contact, and I got to do the show a couple. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, and so I'm, I'm just guessing we're going to see a lot of teal beer uh, tomorrow night. People are just as engaged as they were then. That's the message more than anything else is soak it up, Duval. And- it feels different. Yeah. I think tomorrow night, I mean, I don't know how you – some have said I don't know how you match last Saturday. I think we match it, if not exceed it. Mm-hmm. It had a playoff feel. Now, this is real playoff. I field. saw a social media post. I don't even remember who it was. Uh, it feels like the, the Jags, the team and the fans, there's a quiet confidence that's happening right now. Yeah. That's what I think is happening. That's how I would. I was just talking with some other reporters, mm-hmm. and I described it as such because – it would be easy to say, well, now we made it, and I think we're good. But every single player I spoke to in the locker room this week said, tunnel vision, like we're on to the next game. We haven't even celebrated. Like we had the 20 minutes in the locker room. We all went home and watched the tape. Yep. And then by Sunday it was on to Los Angeles. Yep. Which is which is what you want. A couple off the text line brought to you by Lifetime Enclosures, courtesy of uh, a lot of our nooners, or your constituents, Mayor Curry. Uh, this one courtesy of a local Uber driver who says that he is concerned about getting to riders after the game. So as we're talking about the future of the stadium, how the layout will look, are, are there plans in place for ride sharing to try to make things easier right now? And would you encourage the ride sharing? Obviously, if you're consuming alcohol, we all con- encourage the ride sharing tomorrow night. Yeah, if you're consuming alcohol, do not yes. get behind the wheel. Yes, absolutely. Do not get the behind the wheel sharing. with someone else. They can see. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, as with the new stadium, all that will be taken into consideration. You know, one of the things we're going to have is we're we we want a grant. We're going to have autonomous a pilot autonomous vehicles running up and down Bay Street. I mean, that's coming mm-hmm. soon that's really through the Jacksonville Transportation Authority. So, yeah, that'll be taken into consideration um, in the next phase. Love it. Love it. All right, one last message for the fans from the mayor as we get ready for tomorrow night. Uh, you know, a, little, a little fire in the belly. Just to I, I, sh- I, Show up. 
If you have a ticket or access to a ticket, please be there. Please be loud. Don't sell your ticket to someone that doesn't care about this team. This is not the time to do that. Um, and, and enjoy this. Come down, participate in the festivities. And if you guys will do it with me, I'll close with a Duval. Yeah, let's go. But let's I'm, go in. All right. Three, two, one. Duval! Duval! Thanks, Mayor. We appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having me. Mayor, we appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having me.